And one very important and one very old one is the confirmation bias. I mean, that goes back. Francis Bacon in 1620 said, an opinion draws all things else to support and agree with it. So an opinion draws all things else to, 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 to support it, to agree with it. That's what an opinion does. And Schopenhauer in the 1800s said, an adopted hypothesis, your guess of what's going on, gives us links eyes for everything that confirms it and makes us blind to everything that contradicts it. So we have that in us and it has an evolutionary function because in order to perceive something about reality, we have to kind of like, you know, confirm like, okay, I just saw that. I think it's still there. And I think, yes, that is actually, yes, my memory actually, it confirms reality. So we have to reconfirm reality to us. I'm not going to go into the psychological and social importance of that, but yes, we need to confirm to make sure like we are still here in the same, we're seeing the same thing, right? Like we are still, and myself, I have to convince myself too. So the confirmation bias is really important for our interpretation of what's going on in this three-dimensional space and in, and in time of this, of this universe. Now, when I give you evidence that's some, something, a fact, an alternative fact, a fake news or something that confirms your pre-existing belief you are 88% less likely to identify it as fake. Now, also, you have an almost 70% more robust memory, even if I told you afterwards that, you know, that was just kidding. I mean, that was just kidding. I was just, you know, that was just a joke. Like three months later, when I ask you, you will remember 70% more likely with what had confirmed your opinion. So that's how, this is what this happens on the subconscious level. So what the machine then does, it just shows you, because we like that, we, are, we really appreciate it and we remember it. And the machine just discovered that about ourselves, that it caters to the confirmation bias. So the people on the left, it will show more news from the left and the people on the right, it will show more news, to, news on the right. So that's why you have these filter bubbles, this polarization, for example, in the political realm, because algorithms discovered that. What's another one? Let's scroll through our list of cognitive biases. Let's have another bias, the novelty bias. So we are all descendants of those who disproportionately paid attention to something new. The ones who didn't, again, they were eaten by the saber-toothed tiger. But the ones of us who like, we were like always like, oh, there's something new, there's something new I need to pay attention to, then like we had a higher chance of survival and so they had more offspring, so over evolution, we are all descendants of those. So we have that in us, we disproportionately, so for example, imagine hypothetically, there is a new pandemic coming and it's a virus and then uh, they tell you, wash your hands. You're like, I wash my hands, you know, to get sick, I mean, yeah, my... My grandma told me that. I mean, that's not, that's not really new. But like, let's imagine a president goes on stage, a president of a country, and says, here is Clorox. Take that Clorox and put it in your way and put it in your throat and put it like, like and you're like, whoa, never heard something like this and you will pay attention to it because you're programmed to pay attention to something new. And the other stuff that would really save your life, you know, you kind of like, you don't, you do pay less attention to that. So we are programmed to kind of like pay disproportionately attention to something new. And that's also why people, you know, 70% of the, of the tweets of some kind of article that is shared, that the people who forward that to you never even open the link, <laughs> 70% of it. And you, maybe some of us are also culprits of that. You know, sometimes you forward a link and that's because we rather consume what's new. Oh, the headline, the headline. Do we really read it? And I was like, no. So this is an outgrowth also of the, of the novelty effect. Now, what this paper here argues is only with the confirmation by the novelty effect and some others, but mainly there, is one of the reasons why fake news spread six times faster, 20 times deeper, and two times broader than true news. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. It's good if it confirms your opinion, it spreads, you spread it, because it confirms your opinion. And doesn't matter if it's true or not, as long as it's novel, you will pay attention to it. And that's what these algorithms then, then maximize for. So this is an example of how cognitive biases, and this is just two out of a long list, uh, can lead to that.